Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a nice little colorful seascape together. And if you're enjoying these, be sure to subscribe and leave a like for future painting videos. So let's get started. Now we'll start off today with our two inch brush in a beautiful soft peach color. And as you can see, I went ahead and did a quick sketch and also placed a piece of masking tape along the horizon. It just makes life a lot easier. Well, you don't have to sit there and try to draw a straight line, which would, would not happen for me. There we go. So we'll just sort of fill this in with this peach color. Again, there's going to be a beautiful sunset. There's some beautiful colors in here somewhere. All right. A lot of the light in the middle. It's kind of going to go soft toward the edges. So this is a good color to start out with. Now with our filbert brush and a beautiful soft purple color, we're going to add in some nice little clouds here. Now I know about half the sky is going to be covered with clouds, so I wasn't too worried about the background. I did throw a little blue up in the top there and blend the two together. And before we started, I, I went ahead and put a little clear gel medium and white mix over the entire sky area. Down here is completely dry. This helps us blend color just a bit, not too much. If you ever feel like you're out of control, take a paper towel and wipe the whole thing down. There we go. Now on here, this is important. I, I know I want a cloud stretching all the way across, but I think right here, it's very important that we do something, something that kind of has a little bit of openness to it so you can see the color transition. I don't want to draw a line across where the blue and the, and the peach color are because then you wouldn't see that beautiful transition and it would look kind of weird. So. I'm going to do my best to leave a bit of a transition in there so you can see the color as it fades up. The clouds don't totally block it out. There. All right, now that we're finished with our dark part of the clouds, let's go ahead and pick up our three quarter brush. And I've got a, I've already started mixing a, a nice soft orange color here. I'll pick a little bit of that up on the, on the brush and let's, let's go right here and paint in the beautiful, beautiful soft orange glow areas. Now I sort of lost my sketch. I better put it back in for you. There's a mountain right here or like a little island. I don't know what this is exactly yet. Maybe kind of an island feel to it today. Yeah, definitely has one, but there. So anyway, we need the, the little yellow part coming out from behind this. So that's important that we remember where that is. All right, and then allow this to sort of drift away. Now I've got several different shades here, just different amounts of red. This is about all it takes to change the shade. Pretty easy. There. I'm choosing to use the three quarter brush today for this because I feel it's a little softer and it helps to sort of layer the paint over without cutting through. And that's going to be a big advantage here always looking for ways to sort of make life easier and certainly safer. We don't want to have any muddy areas. All right. And then we sort of put more red into the color and just go up from here. <laughs> I'll show you something really neat in just a second. First though, we got to get this in. Now with a clean three quarter brush and some very pure white and yellow, I'm going to work it really well into the brush. And all right, this is a fun and exciting part of the painting. Let's maybe right here, just throw in carefully, just sort of throw it in there. I don't want to go so loose though that it goes everywhere. So you'll find a balance. It's fine. There. Isn't this pretty? And throw it on as, as thick as you want because we're not painting over it again. This is it. All right. Make it very bright, as bright as you can possibly get it. And then as you come out here, just touch. There. Normally texture is is not a good thing. But here, because like I said, we're finished with the sky after this, you can add as much as you want. It won't harm, it won't harm the painting. Now you may not want three inches of texture sticking out. That's totally up to you. All right. And of course this light sort of comes up here maybe and just touches. But do this part first so your brush is clean. And then if it gets a little dirty up here, we don't care. Nice, very subtle, nothing too large. Keep it subtle and keep it from drifting over here too much. Mostly in the middle is where we want it. 
Now we can begin to, to shape a beautiful little piece of land here that sticks out like this. Look at that big bump. So it kind of went down and then across to give it some, some variation. See if all of them slope in the same direction. It just gets kind of repetitive and we're not interested in a repetitive painting today. So <laughs> we won't do that. All right, this is fun. It's always neat to see the skies, those really complicated skies sort of take shape and then everything else around it, it all just works and fits and we'll take these colors and throw them in the ocean <laughs> and it'll be even better. It'll be cool. So let me show you what colors. See, I've got a big old mess. I need, to I need to clean off my palette here in a second, but I'm sort of throwing in random colors as I go to, to help everything tie together. There. I think maybe we'll have a couple of big palm trees off this little land formation. Now I went ahead and removed the tape. So all I'm simply doing now is dropping these little these little land areas down so that they have some depth to them. We got some layers and each layer comes down a little farther. That way you can literally kind of go back into the painting instead of just flat on there it is. It's a lot nicer this way. It's simple, just take the, we got all the colors laying out. So you just take the color that matches and do your best to kind of fill it in like this. And just drop it down a little, not a whole lot, maybe an inch or so on this big one. And then just a, a brush width or so on that one. All right, I'm using 18 by 24 canvas. It's what I almost always use. It works out pretty well. Next, I'll load a nice soft yellow color onto the three quarter brush. And as you can see, I did a quick sketch here, maybe where I want a, a wave there and a couple rocks. So now, now that we got all that planned, I'm gonna block in just a, a little bit of color here, very similar to the, to the mountain color back there, maybe just a little more pale than, than the mountain. There, see that? So there's a little contrast there, it's a little lighter. Doesn't need to be straight. In fact, you want it a bit staggered so you so you maintain the variation in the, in the bottom of the land areas. Now this back one can be straight, that's okay. <laughs> there we go, I almost didn't need the tape, but it's nice to have it there just to, they gave me a straight line when I pulled it. It's nice to, nice to have that to work from, even though we covered up most of it, that's okay. All right. Now it's gonna get bright down here. So make sure you add just a little more yellow to your brush. Not a whole lot, just a, just a bit. There's a secondary wave right here, so sort of start thinking about that. Next with our three quarter brush, I'm gonna work on a soft foam area here. Now I have this crashing wave and it's, it's just breaking up here on the, on the shore. It's rolling onto the shore, so we need some foam. Now that's gonna look really flat until we get all of the beautiful contrast dark areas in there. So just sort of work with it. As it is for now, I want you to get in a lot of these light areas before the darks, because it's easier just to pull the darks into the light. And then we'll very carefully highlight. Now with some black and brown here on the, the three quarter brush, I'm gonna quickly drop in a little palm tree back here. And I'm gonna use just the, the corner of the brush to create these, to create these little palm fronds there. Don't want too many, and I definitely don't want them sharp. So allow it to mix and become just the tiniest bit muddy and soft. Now we have very little paint down here. I'm looking at this canvas and I can see the, I can see the weave and the texture of the canvas through all this paint, even through this palm tree. So it tells you how little there is. I'm not building up any texture here at all. And that's important, otherwise it won't go on dark like this. It'll just go muddy. And if you have any experience with painting skies, you know what I mean. If you get your sky too slippery, your clouds, or anything else you try to put over, it gets very muddy. So avoid that. Keep it nice and dry and as little paint as you can put on there. <laughs> there. One other thing is don't get them too big or they just go out of proportion. They look too close. These are far away. Now, as you can see here, I've added just a bit of purple underneath this wave and that just gives it a shadow. So we have something to work with. Now I want to carefully, carefully, touch in just a little bit of this color. This is a nice light yellow-orange color, mostly yellow and white. Touch of red just to 
so it didn't look so lemon yellow. There. And I'm just touching it on. Now you have a couple of options here. I don't want it to mix too much. So you can either use the blender brush or maybe a, a one inch if you're careful. I think maybe I'm gonna use the blender brush today just to make life easy. Carefully, carefully feather it down into the wet paint below. Now with our three quarter brush and a nice soft yellow and red color, I'm just gonna throw a little highlight here onto the wave where it's really crashing and, and this foam is coming up and hitting a lot of light, catching a lot of light. So it's important that you make this bright enough and we can get away with these, with these vibrant colors because look at that sunset or sunrise, wherever this is. There. Nice, and then let it fade out because you don't want that light all the way across. That would just be, oh, that would be sad. <laughs> It'd be distracting. So just kind of keep the light concentrated here in the middle and then allow it to go more subtle as you come away. Nice soft edges, blurry edges, nothing too hard. And build up little layers of highlight so that it's not flat. And if you want, you can even, maybe we're just seeing the top of the wave here. So just touch it and pull. If you're at all worried, take a paper towel, wipe down this whole area, and then do this. That way you don't have muddy, muddy paint. Now we can begin focusing on some of the, some of the most exciting parts of the painting. Always one of my favorite parts is detailing it out and adding the final highlights because this is where it goes from, well, that's nice too to a stunning little painting. Now we'll sort of finish up this painting here with our liner brush. And with a seascape, you can really, you can really make the foam areas come to life with just a few strokes. It doesn't take a whole lot. If you get too many lines in here, then it ends up looking kind of a little too busy. <laughs> we don't want a busy seascape. We want an effective seascape. Now I've selected kind of a mid-tone color here. It's not quite as bright as the brightest areas. So I can go just about anywhere with this. There, and obviously they're gonna show best in the dark areas. So that's where we'll focus mostly. There, now you can always add these little tiny ripples. And actually here, do you see this? This is just a little bit of, of light color, just basically the same colors we used in the ocean here. A little bit of that light color there just to show the wet sand and it's reflecting the sky because obviously it's wet. It just adds a little, little realism to the painting. There we go. Just add tons of these foam areas. Maybe some down here to this old wave. This is one, this is the previous one. It's sort of washing back again. There. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.